Human capital development is critical for countries to achieve sustained inclusive economic growth. Thailand has announced its new national education strategy to help the workforce prepare for highly skilled jobs of the future. We are very honored to have the Minister of Education, Mr. Nathapon Thipsuwan, joining us. And here's more. Sadiqa. Sadiqa. Minister, thank you very much for joining us. Amid the rising challenges, the Thai government is reforming its human capital development policies in order to prepare Thailand's workforce for the future. So to begin, can you give us an outlook on the state of human capital here in Thailand and also the skill gap that the country is facing amid the uh, rapid global changes in technology? Yeah, first of all, I, I think we have to look at the, the fundamental of Thailand. Um, we all feel that Thailand has great potential uh, we are sitting right in the middle of, of ASEAN countries and I think if we do things properly we could be the center for Asia um, so we got to take that opportunity to um, encourage investment into into Thailand the reason that we have not been able to attract as many investors into Thailand may be part of it because of the human capital development over the years that we have uh, not put concentrated efforts uh, in certain uh, sectors. I think today uh, the vocational education uh, is a major part of our educational reform. I think we have to look at the vocational uh, population um, in order to prepare them for the future. The world has changed very fast and we want to make sure that we have enough capable skill, human capital in order to support the, the investments. Well, I believe that the Ministry of Education has launched quite a few initiatives recently in order to build a stronger education ecosystem. So can you tell us a bit about the directions that have been laid out and how it will be implemented in the short run? Okay, I think the, uh, the most important things that we have to look is the foundation. Uh, I feel that our teachers uh, would need a bit more development uh, programs in order to, for them to be up to speed with the, uh, the changing of the world today in terms of technology and the curriculum uh, that are necessary in order to advance our students uh, and prepare them for, for, the, for the world. Um, therefore, teachers at all levels, uh, childhood development, uh, primary school, secondary school, vocational, um, would need to be reskilled in, in some way to make sure that they are equipped with the digital technology understanding and that will translate into the quality of students coming into the program and out to the program. Um, therefore, we, we feel that uh, if we lay down the good fundamentals with the teachers, uh, we would be able to increase the performance of, of the students. Then again, we need the students to understand the demand of the market. Um, the, the, the world today have, have changed in terms of popularity of jobs or, or skills. I think students need to be more aware that uh, not only doctors, nurses or engineers are the qualified uh, professions. Uh, I think uh, professions like digital analysis, uh, you know, uh, technology related uh, skills also can command greater salary. So these are the things that teachers need to be uh, relaying the information to, to the students. Is the program to accelerate this teaching, uh, teaching standards under the HCEC model? Yes. Or the Human Capital Excellence Center model? Yes. So uh, do we already have these centers running in order to improve the teachers' uh, teaching skills? We are putting budget into these centers. You know, combined with the basic education, we would have total of 280 centers uh, throughout Thailand um, within 2021. So we hope that these centers will substitute uh, seminars, would substitute um, uh, previous um, methods that teachers would need to do their their improved skills. You know, they would be able to to learn online initially and then come and discuss with the teachers in the center about the necessary improvement for different uh, 
qualifications. I see. Apart from HCEC model, I believe that there's also the Digital Education Excellence Platform, otherwise known as DEEP, and the ones targeting individual education. Can you elaborate on these two? Yes. If we are going to improve the skills of the teachers, we need to monitor it. We need to make sure that they are qualified. They would be able to get the proper certificate, certificate that uh, related to their improved skills. Um, that's something we want to monitor. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that they take the skills and then uh, translate into their teaching techniques. And that would be shown in the deep uh, platform. Um, the other individual assessment, it's like a digital evaluation uh, program for teachers and students. We hope that we, we would be able to track their progress, both teachers and students, over the years. That would eliminate the, uh, the requirement for testing because we would understand the, the skills that uh, gifted to the, to the students or skills that are of interest of the students. Um, and then the teachers would be able to guide them in the right direction. I see. Earlier you mentioned about the uh, market demands. What's the current market demand when it comes to human resources? Um, different sectors have, have different demands and I think we are short on all. You know, maybe with the exception of um, teaching position. Um, I think more, more students are looking at teachers as a uh, profession that anybody can can do, but I think if they realize that there are other skills that are required, uh, for example, data analysis, um, I think the uh, skills related to analytic analytical skills um, are necessary in today's world. You know, the critical thinking are also important, and that can be spread out into many other professions. So these are the things that um, the students would need to, to understand and, and then uh, guide themselves towards the basic understanding and then uh, propel themselves to another level. Minister, in this uh, demand-driven concept, how are you engaging with the private sector? How are you collaborating with them in order to get job opportunities for, for people in a time when unemployment rate is rising? Okay. We, we have asked them you know, to give us projection on, on their growth, their potential growth, um, and then project it in terms of their requirement um, and the skills necessary. And we don't have illusion that we can uh, fulfill the skills requirement by ourselves. We need their help, you know, because they, they understand the, the uh, future of the technology. So if they're able to collaborate with us, talk with us about the future requirement of each skills, then we would be able to work together, bring in professionals um, to give assistance to the current teachers and also bring in professionals to help the teachers to, to train the students in the school and outside the schools. So it's the collaboration between the two parties that's very important. At the event today, we saw at least 26 companies actually coming in to participate. They'll be designing study courses uh, for, yes. for teachers and students? Yes, we, we allow them, we, we give them uh, more flexibility to design the curriculum uh, because I think they would understand the, the skills needed um, to be able to survive in their industry um, and also hone their skill to, to move and advance their current skills. You know, so we, we depend on them quite a bit in terms of the vocational education. So investment in people is probably one of the best ways to create opportunities and also help us achieve inclusive economic growth. Yes. Minister, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Sadiqa.